Welcome to Guide to IELTS. Let's first plan and then write an essay on this topic. In some countries, more and more people are becoming interested in finding out about the history of the house or building they live in. What are the reasons for this? How can people research this? The question is from Cambridge IELTS Book 16 Academic and it's a great example of why you need to get into the habit of planning a variety of essays especially about topics of which you may not have any knowledge. It's not a question I can relate to. I live in an apartment building, I guess maybe 10-15 years old. What history could I look for here? So what do I do when I get a question like this? If this question had been, more and more people are becoming interested in history, I could have come up with some reasons. Although again, that's not something I can relate to either. I'm not too interested in history. And even in that case, I would need to give reasons why there is an increase in interest in history. So it's not just about people being interested in something. It is about why more people are getting interested in something. However, as soon as I looked at this question, the first thing that came to my mind was maybe the reason that people are interested in the history of the house that they are living in could be that they live in a grand old house, a house that has been around for a few generations. So there could be reasons to know about the history of the place. I'll start planning this essay and as I plan it, I'll try to run you through how I'm coming up with ideas. Before I start planning, I already know what the basic format of my essay is going to be. First, I'm going to write the introduction. Second, the reasons. That is answer the first question. Third, I'll give how we can find out about the history of these places. That is answer the second question. And lastly, a conclusion. The conclusion in this case would just be a summary of whatever I have written in the essay because I don't have to write an opinion here. If we are writing an essay where we are asked whether you agree or disagree or what are the advantages and disadvantages, we need to take a side. We need to mention whether we are agreeing or not or we comment on whether there are more advantages or there are more disadvantages. Here, there is no such thing happening. Still, the conclusion is absolutely necessary. As I start thinking about why people would be interested in houses, I'm actually thinking of why we are interested in old buildings and monuments in general. I remember visiting a fort a few years ago and the guy telling us details of how in olden times of no electricity and no plumbing, the design was such that the building stayed cool during summers. There was a pond in the center of the grand building, etc. If I imagine this on a smaller scale and imagine if I lived in an old house, I'd want to know how it was planned. And this makes me think of the fact that quite a few people in today's times are getting very fascinated towards simpler lifestyles. And that is something we can learn when we get to know about the history of a house. Another idea I'm getting by the same logic is getting ideas about eco-friendly and environment-friendly methods of the past. Why else would a person who lives in or owns such a house want to know about the history of the place? I remember watching a movie in which a person buys an old house and wants to renovate it in such a way that the original charm, the original character of the place is maintained. That is, although the place would be renovated, there would be some modern facilities in the place, but it still feels like a grand old building. So that's another good reason why one would want to know the history. And as I'm thinking of this, there is a negative I'm thinking of. In some medical TV show that I watched, there was this mention of someone living in an old house and their child becoming sick because the paint that was used on the walls had lead in it. So we can write that people may want to ensure that there is no health risk involved because of the old material that has been used. And there is example of lead paint or asbestos, which is another material which can cause health issues being used in tiles, etc. The last reason I can think of comes from why humans study a lot of things, whether it is study of history or astronomy and many other subjects. We are curious beings. We are so curious about different things that there is actually a proverb to warn us about the negatives of being too curious. Curiosity killed the cat. I can't use that one here in this essay, but it's certainly a good one. 
But humans have always been curious. If I want to use this point, I have to connect it to two things. Why is there an increase in the interest? And secondly, why be interested in the house that a person lives in? How can I justify an increase in interest? I think one thing I can write is that with easy access to internet, curiosity has also increased because now we can get answers. And I can write an add-on point here that if a person lives in their ancestral house, which can actually help them understand their familial history, it would be an add-on motivation for a person to want to know the history of their house. So here we have five good points on a topic which initially seemed very difficult. The ideas I'm getting are from different places. Something I watched on a TV show from having visited a monument once and just understanding of why we like to know things in general. Although I will be writing an essay using all the points because I want to show you how to make good sentences for each of these points. I recommend that when you are writing the essay, you go in for minimum two reasons. We do need minimum of two reasons because the question says what are the reasons for it. This word reasons means it has to be more than one reason. If you write only one reason, it will be considered an incomplete answer. So you go in for minimum two reasons and a maximum of three. More than that is not really required. You can always choose to combine a few reasons like these first two reasons about fascination towards simpler lifestyle and getting to know about environment friendly material can be written in such a way that they are the same point. Now we try to think of how people can research this. How can people find out about the history of a house? Again, I'm trying to use my imagination. If I'm living in a big grand house and I want to know about its history, how would I find out? One way is I talk to my neighbors, especially the elderly, the old people who have lived there for a long time. And as an extension to this, I'm thinking that if I've just bought the house, so it is a conditional point that if a person has just bought the house, they can talk to the estate agent who has helped them buy the house or they can talk to the previous owner also. Second source of information of this research could be a library. Old editions of newspapers and magazines, books of different kinds, especially about the local region, can have this information about history of places, the history of the area, and the local library is the place one must go to. Last idea I'm getting from the fact that I do know that whenever you want to build a house, you need to get its design approved from the government authorities. So as a reverse of that, if I want to know how a place was originally designed and maybe even who applied for approval, who designed the place in the first place, I could get all this information from the government offices. I have my essay planned now. These are the reasons why one would want to know the history of their house. And these are ideas about how one can know about this history. If I use all of these points, I'm pretty sure my essay will cross 400 words. Although there is no upper word limit given in IELTS, there is no reason to write very long essays. A big negative of writing very long essays is that the more you write, the more could be the mistakes that you make. If you make punctuation mistakes, if you make spelling mistakes, the more you write, the more of those mistakes you have made. Another negative is that off-topic content has negative marking in IELTS. So whatever points you write, you need to make sure that they are directly connected to what the question is. So aim for a maximum of two to three reasons and two to three ways of researching. And that should be more than enough. Before I start writing my essays, I once again look at my question and try to think of synonyms for the major words that are there in my question. More and more people are becoming interested. I could write that the interest is increasing among people or interest is increasing among residents. Also for interested, there are synonyms such as fascinated or intrigued. People is always a difficult word to find synonyms for. Two easy synonyms are persons and individuals. Sometimes we can use the word general public. That won't really work in this essay because it is about a person being interested in their own house not about people becoming interested in houses in general. I can, however, replace people with maybe residents or inhabitants. However, I won't blindly use synonyms. For example, I would prefer not to use the word dwellers here. Dwellers is more of a general word which we even use for animals. 
to find out something, I could write to know about something or to get knowledge of something. Then there's the word history. Certainly, I can use the word historical. So instead of saying that people want to know the history of a place, I could say that they want to know the historical background of a place. Other words that I could use could be the past of a place or just background of a place. For house, I can use the word residence or residential property and obviously home. Most of these are very basic words, but I'll consciously keep them in mind as I start writing because I want to try my best to use as much variety of words as possible. Let's start writing now. The first paragraph that we write consists of three parts. The first is some kind of a general statement, second, paraphrasing of the question, and third, a statement that mentions what the essay is going to talk about. The first part, the general statement is optional. I'll talk about that later. I'll first start with the paraphrasing of the question. So I have paraphrased the question in two different ways here. The first that I've written is, there has been a growing interest in recent times among residents to know about the historical background of their residential properties. Another possible paraphrasing is, an increasing number of individuals are these days intrigued by the historical background of their residence. This I would follow with mentioning that there are a variety of reasons for doing it and many different ways of researching it too. Again, I'm giving you two different ways of writing this thing. One is, I believe that the reasons for this depend from one individual to another which I will explore in this essay along with how the past of a place can be researched. Because I've already planned my essay, I know I'm going to give a variety of reasons and that is the information that I'm using to make this statement. Instead, I could just have written the factors that contribute to this fascination with history of one's house are varied and so are the ways that one can research them. Just this can work as a good introductory paragraph. Obviously, if you're able to write a general statement before this, it's a big positive. General statement, that is what to begin the essay with, is something that most people struggle with the most. My recommendation where this is concerned is practice general statements. They certainly help, but if your general statement does not connect to the essay, if it sounds very general, very memorized, then it will not really help. It could actually be considered a negative because it may come across as memorized to the examiner. For example, in this particular essay, if I have these sayings in my mind that history repeats itself or that we can learn a lot from history or history teaches us the mistakes that we are going to make, these are all general statements about history. So if I start my essay with, it's a famous saying that history repeats itself and follow it up with that a lot of people are interested in the history of their houses. There is no connection between the general statement and the paraphrasing of the question. Better not write such a general statement. That is why I worked on the paraphrasing of the question first. Just to show you that you can begin your essay like this. You don't necessarily need to write a general statement. But if I do want to have a general statement in this case, I look at the question and figure out what is it that I'm instinctively thinking about. One general statement that I make could be about people being curious about things in general. Or it could be about the fact that with changing times, people's interests are changing. Or that history is something that has fascinated people since times immemorial. But in present times, people are getting more and more interested in their own personal histories. This is actually a fact. A lot of people are working on their family trees. People are trying to figure out who their ancestors are. They are getting DNA tests done for this purpose. These are too many details. I wouldn't want to write any of that because that's too detailed and too off topic. But I could start with writing that the younger generation is more fascinated with the past than the older generation. And then I can continue by saying that an example of this is the increased interest that people have in the history of the house that they live in. So I have written different general statements using these ideas and then connected them to the paraphrasing of the question that I have done. So to make a good general statement, you have to understand the overall meaning of what the question is asking for. 
as I have mentioned before, I will be writing an essay using all the points that we have discussed during the planning of the essay. However, you do not need all these points. It will be too long an essay. As I keep writing, I will keep mentioning some of the transition words, some of the synonyms that I'm using, but some would be just there on your screen. So let's start with the second paragraph now, which answers the first question. What are the reasons for this? The beginning of the second paragraph, that is the first body paragraph, needs to be a topic sentence followed by one point after the other. The topic sentence can be something as simple as, there are a number of reasons why people have a desire to know about the history of their residences. Followed by the next sentence which begins with firstly or to begin with and then talks about the first point that we have. Another way of handling this is combining your first point with the topic sentence. The purpose of the topic sentence is to immediately convey to the reader what you're going to write in the paragraph. Are you going to write reasons? Are you going to write how to research or something else? So what I'm doing here is combining the topic sentence with the first point. The first point that we had thought of was that people are fascinated towards simpler lifestyle. So I would write one reason for increased fascination with the past of one's place of residence is that a surge has been observed in the past decade or so among many towards a simpler living style. A few things of note here, instead of house or residence, I've written place of residence. The question doesn't specifically mention since when people are getting more interested in the history of houses. So I have not mentioned a time period in the first paragraph. But now I'm just mentioning that maybe in the last 10 years or so there has been an increase. Now one very important part of writing a good essay is to elaborate on the points that you're writing. And as we elaborate, we are also able to connect our points better to the question, to the different details in the question. So people are fascinated towards simpler lifestyle. My next sentence is, an example of such a living style is the houses of the olden days. So instead of repeating simpler lifestyle, I'm using such a living style and directly connecting simpler lifestyle to the older houses here. And then I'm following it up with, as a result, as a result of what? As a result of fascination towards houses. People want to know more about how they were designed and built. Again, they is connecting to the houses in the previous sentence. Now I start with the second reason that we had, which was about getting information about the eco-friendly and the environment-friendly methods of the past. I'll start this sentence with moreover, which is a transition word we use instead of also. Moreover, there is much that can be learnt from the environment-friendly construction material and architecture of the days gone by. I'm consciously using different type of phrases to refer to the past. So first I had written the olden days, now I'm writing the days gone by. Next, the third point that I thought of was about people wanting to renovate their houses in a way that the old charm of the place is maintained. I could start this point with another transition word like additionally or furthermore. But a smoother way, a better way is to use some phrases in between. So I'm writing an additional motivating factor. Instead of reason, I'm using motivating factor. And instead of finding out history, I'm using the phrase seeking out details of the history. An additional motivating factor for seeking out details of the history of a house is when the homeowners want to renovate a place but desire to maintain the original charm and character of the place. I have consciously not used the word homeowner or just owners in place of people before this because the question doesn't say that people who own a house want to know about the house. It just says that people who live in a house want to know about the house. It could be a tenant. But here, because I'm talking about renovation, it kind of makes sense that a person who owns the house would want to renovate it rather than someone who's renting a house. It's not a rule, but the probability is more. So I'm using the word homeowners here instead of people or residents. The next point that we have is about any health hazards in the house. In this one, we'll mention that sometimes there's a health risk and we'll follow it up with the example of lead and asbestos. 
and then later mention that it can sometimes lead to health issues among young children. Again, I'll start with a phrase. Another motive behind this is, again, motive is a replacement for reason in this context. And also notice the other transition phrases I'm using as I connect one thought to the other. Another motive behind this could be to ensure that the material used in the house are not detrimental to health in any way. For instance, many old buildings used paint which had lead in it or used material which contained asbestos. It was later discovered that these can cause many health issues, both physical and mental, especially among young children. I have used the words could and can in these sentences because this can happen. There is no certainty of it. And then I'll follow it up with another transition phrase, therefore, and simply write that because of these reasons, a person would want to know about these details of their house. Therefore, a person would want to know about these details. Or I could write, therefore, a resident would want to know about these details. The last point we've thought about is about curiosity. This one I'll start with last but not the least. Last but not the least, in my opinion, the primary reason why humans are keen to know things is that they are curious beings. The curiosity would be particularly piqued if one lives in their familial home the history of which can open doors to the stories of one's ancestors. Curiosity being piqued is a collocation. The adjective familial refers to whenever we are talking about anything related to family. To open door to something is a phrase which refers to having easy access to something. So instead of saying the history of one's ancestors or history of one's family, I'm using the word stories here. A synonym of history which can be used only when we are using it in the right context. Now this curiosity has soared recently as the sources by which we can search for information have skyrocketed thanks to the internet. With this one sentence I have connected my point to a very important part of the question that there has been an increase in the interest in recent times. We start the next paragraph now, which will have the methods by which one can research the history of a house. Again, we need some kind of a topic sentence, which mentions clearly what the paragraph is going to hold. In this case, the topic sentence can just be, there are quite a few ways by which this information can be obtained or by which this information about history of a house or a history of a building can be obtained. I am instead adding something before this and connecting it to the reasons. So what I'm writing is that whatever the reason may be, there are many different ways of getting this information. And in this one, I'm thinking of using the word abode. Abode is a formal, a very literary term for house. So we'll start the third paragraph with whatever one's motivation might be behind wishing to gather information about their abode. There are quite a few ways by which this information can be obtained. Now I can start with firstly and then give the first method of doing so. But I have three points. I have neighbors and other people that someone would know. Then I have local libraries and I have government departments. I want to convey that the best way would be just to talk to neighbors. So instead of saying firstly, I'm using the phrase the best sources. I could have instead written the first sources. The best source according to me is to talk to one's neighbors, especially the elderly lot. Notice the usage of the word lot here. I could just have written elderly people or just elderly. I've used the phrase according to me here, just I had used in my opinion in the previous paragraph. In my opinion, the primary reason people want to know about houses is because they are curious. In my opinion, the best way is talk to neighbors. That's my opinion. I don't know for sure. And as I'm writing about the elderly, I'm thinking of a phrase, trove of knowledge, which basically refers to something or someone which has lots and lots of knowledge. I could say libraries are a trove of knowledge. In this context, I could say they, that is the elderly people, can sometimes prove to be a trove of knowledge. The transition word that I'll be using now is similarly because similar to neighbors are 
the estate agent and the previous owner. Also, this particular point is a conditional point that if the house is a recently bought house, then these people can help. So, similarly, if the house is a recent purchase, the estate agent and the previous owner may also have information about this subject. The second point about local libraries, I'll just start with the simple secondly. Secondly, local libraries are a brilliant source of old documents, including newspapers, which may contain information about the construction of buildings as well as about the residents of the local area. And the last point about government departments. Lastly, one can visit the government department that is responsible for approving and authorizing the layout and design of buildings as they may have original design details and details of when the place was constructed, etc. Lastly, one can visit the government department that is responsible for approval and authorization of the layout and design of buildings as they may have original design details along with the facts about when the place was constructed, etc. Finally, we start our last paragraph, the conclusion. I could start it with in conclusion or to conclude, but in this case, I'm just starting with all in all. All in all, the history of any place can reveal many intriguing facts. And if this place is one's own home, it becomes all the more fascinating. So I'm connecting the fact that history in general is intriguing or fascinating or interesting to how history of one's own home would be even more interesting. Also, there are different ways by which these facts can be discovered. So in my conclusion, I've just said that yes, history is interesting and that there are many different ways by which we can find out about this history. I'm getting a couple of other phrases in my mind. For example, something being an adventure or a treasure hunt. So if I'm trying to find out the history of my house, it could almost be like an adventure or a treasure hunt. Another phrase I have in mind is humble abode. It is a phrase that we sometimes use in kind of a humorous way. Like if a guest comes over to your house and you tell them, welcome to my humble abode. These kind of words and phrases have to be used just right. And you can do that only if you're familiar with these phrases. Anyway, using these ideas about treasure hunt and humble abode, this is the last sentence I've come up with. It can be quite an adventure if one is truly passionate about hunting the treasures that their humble abode holds. Even without this last sentence, the essay would be complete. This complete essay is about 450 words plus. We certainly don't need these many. If you use just two reasons and two methods of researching, plus the add-on details that we have written, you can easily write a 250 word essay. Here is a list of some of the synonyms and phrases that we have used in this essay. They can come in handy when writing other essays as well. I hope with this essay, I helped you figure out how you can plan essays on difficult subjects even if you do not have any personal experience of something. The direct link to this complete essay on our website www.guidetoiles.com is in the description of this video. If you found the video helpful, do like and share it. Help us reach a wider audience and do leave a comment. We value your feedback. And finally, subscribe to our YouTube channel. All the very best to you.